chair now recognizes Mr. Sarbanes for five minutes. Thanks very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to the panel. I can't think of a greater moral imperative than to successfully make this transition uh, to renewable sources of energy as quickly as we can, but also practically uh, if we're going to address uh, climate change and address, address the health effects that we see from reliance on um, fossil fuels for, for sourcing electricity and other power. The EPA's proposed power plant rule, which obviously we're talking about, about today, excuse me, is part of a very sensible um, ongoing effort by the Biden-Harris administration to ensure that reliable energy does not come at the expense of public health. That's, that's the idea here. And the rule would set very reasonable pollution limits on power plants protecting the health and well-being of Americans across the country. In particular, I'll just mention um, the low income often and communities of color that have often borne the brunt of such pollution. Again, if we want to tie it back to a, a moral imperative underlying this. The rule's not an overreach. It's a sound, common sense, practical step uh, to take. It's exactly what the EPA should be doing. I want to touch on reliability, which is a topic, obviously, that we've been talking about quite a bit here today. I represent Central Maryland, which is firmly within the PJM grid. Earlier this year, PJM forecasted that its grid would see roughly 40 gigawatts of retirements. Retirements, I'll note, that it explicitly did not tie to the rule that we're discussing today. It's also had, as of the time of that report, um, 290 gigawatts of capacity trying to connect to PJM's grid. Uh, Mr. Duffy, we've heard some fear-mongering um, clearly about resource retirements today, but could you talk a little bit about how the grid operators actually have quite a big lever to get more power onto their grid quickly by reforming their interconnection policies? So um, fortunately or unfortunately, I'm not a FERC attorney, mm -hmm. um, but I, I can, you know, I, as I'm not prepared to speak on kind of reforming the interconnection policies, but, you know, what I can share is that the proposal is going to allow grid operators, plant owners, um, and states significant lead time in order to, you know, deal with these sorts of issues um, so that they can, the flexibilities can accommodate the dynamics in their grid um, EPA has also committed to near constant communication with DOE and FERC throughout this process. Um, also happy to talk about kind of the, the reliability features that are in this rule um, right. to, to help support, um, support the rule. Appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, without objection, I'd like to enter into the record a report prepared by Wilson Energy Economics critiquing the PJM report. That without means, objection. Thanks so very ordered. much. Um, my Republican colleagues are concerned um, clearly about energy reliability in these discussions about um, EPA potentially regulating pollution from power plants. Um, but I think they may be actively, uh, or maybe it's unwittingly, ignoring the significant reliability shortcomings of fossil fuels. So, Mr. Duffy, maybe take a shot at that. Can you describe the reliability concerns associated with fossil fuels? Because we keep hearing about it on the other side of the ledger. And why we should remember that fossil fuels are not 100 percent reliable. Sure. I mean, especially with um, with aging coal plants, they, you know, as they reach their remaining useful life, there's more time that they have to, um, they, they break down and need to be fixed. Um, you know, we've had coal piles being frozen before. Um, so it's it's not a, um, it, there's there's not a silver bullet here. Um, and, and the best way to keep fossil on the grid uh, at baseload is with this virtually free carbon pollution technology. I appreciate that. I mean, the goal here, obviously, is, is to strike a balance as we move as quickly and um, uh, intentionally as we can towards a new portfolio when it comes to how we um, power our society and, and, frankly, how we lead globally here, and we've got more to do in that respect. Um, so I want to thank you for explaining how we, we don't have to choose between reasonable pollution regulation, which will lead to healthier communities, uh, on the one hand, and reliable electricity, which from what I can um, discern, uh, uh, EPA's rule 
will actually enhance over time. Uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield